Sorry about all that. I want to welcome you. I felt this week as I was praying that this is an alley for his people, that Christians need to realize what they've been called to do. That it isn't you get saved, you attend a good church. By the way, this is a great church. Pastor Jesse can attest to that. He's the head pastor, or lead pastor, one of the two. Uh, I was on staff there for two years, a great man. Him and his wife, Liz, are true people. Um, this week as I was praying about not only what I would say briefly, the Lord gave me this verse, Isaiah 49, 22. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and set up my standard to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their bosom and your daughters will be carried on their shoulders. That's talking about us. That's talking about believers, both Jew and Gentile, who realize that two primary purposes of the Lord are to save the nations and to get his people back to Israel. He was relentless about that. No COVID-19, which I despise. I won't say too much more about it, but it is the act of the devil. Uh, nothing will stop him from getting his people back to Israel. And we have that opportunity to be a part of that. We can choose not to. We can say, okay, let's let the Jews do their own, their own deal. Or we can be a part of what God wants us to do. So this is what this conference is about, this event. Uh, I'm grateful for the men and the women who are going to be speaking, sharing their hearts, sharing what the Lord has already put in them and that they've been walking out for years. I know these people personally. Dr. Peter Wins has been a friend for over 22 years. Carolyn Hyde is on her way as I speak. I wouldn't make the schedule she has made as she flew from Tel Aviv to JFK to Detroit to Cincinnati and then drove to Knoxville last night all in one day. So she'll get here about noon. She's scheduled to speak at the luncheon. And if she doesn't, then Jesse Andrew will fill in. <laughs> Just teasing. Coquette came in to the U.S. in May. Smart man. He got ahead of things. He stayed. I picked him up at the airport last night. He'll be coming in here shortly. And with Tim, Tim Buck, will be speaking this morning. David Peterman, Howard Taylor. Got a good crew. So. Come on up, David, we'll say a prayer. We're gonna have shofars blown. Mordecai, that's your cue. David and Mordecai are good friends. I like being a, a Gentile among brothers. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for this time together. This time to come and focus on your purpose in this world. Father, the opportunity to partner with you in what you're doing and bringing people back to your holy land, Lord. Father, we ask that you would send your Ruach HaKadosh this morning to be in our midst and to be with us throughout the day. Yeshua, we just ask that you'd be with us. And we just thank you for all that you've done to bring about this conference. Father, we ask that each person would leave here with something they didn't have when they came. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
or it's not going to end in a gift shop. <laughs> you know, you go to Disney World, everything ends in a gift shop. It doesn't matter where. But uh, you go to the bathroom, you come out of a gift shop. <laughs> But anyways, um, <laughs> but leading up to 2020, over the last series of years, we have had major cataclysmic events. We've had volcanic eruptions in Iceland. We've had tsunamis, earthquakes all over. I mean, from Christchurch, New Zealand, to California, Japan, all kinds of disasters. We've had water shortages in Africa. We've had locusts mm. like they've never seen before in the Mideast. And I'm gonna start off with the scripture. And uh, you know, who could have prophesied these things? All these things happening, who could have prophesied all that? 2,000 years ago, Yeshua did. And it starts out when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the Talmudim came to him privately. Talmudim is disciples. They said, Tell us when these things will happen, and what is the sign coming of the Olam Hazen? Is the ending. Yeshua replied, Watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and they will lead you astray. You will hear noise of wars nearby and news of such wars afar off. See that you don't become frightened. Such things must happen, but the end is yet to come. For peoples will fight each other. Nations will fight each other. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All of this is the beginning of birth pains. At that time, you will be arrested and handled over and punished and put to death. And all peoples will hate you because of me. At that time, many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. Many false prophets will appear and fool many people and many people's love will grow cold because of the increased distance from the Torah. But whoever holds out to the end will be delivered, and the good news about the kingdom will be announced to the whole world as a witness and to all the goyim, all the nations. And it is then when the end will come. This is Matthew 24, 3 through 14 from the complete Jewish Bible. Yeshua, Jesus, he's laid this right out there for us. He's in this conversation with his Talmudim, his disciples. And he says, he says, this thing must happen. This stuff must occur. But he says it's birth pains. It's not the time of the end yet. These are birth pains. All of this shaking and all the things that are happening are the precursor and they'll bring about the end times. One of the things that really set my spirit as I was reading this, it says here, many are being trapped into betraying one another and hating one another. Whether it is our faith or our skin color, I'm going to say this right now. It's a trap. Amen. It's a trap of the enemy Amen. to take you out of the will of God and take you away from his purposes. Amen. It's a trap to get caught up in these things. Do any of these other things in this scripture sound familiar? The earthquakes and the famine, the wars and rumors of wars. Over the last couple of years, anti-Semitism is on its rise. It's rising up. It's rearing its ugly head. 
simply it's hate whether it is hate because of one's faith or hate because of one's skin color it's all hate in parts of our great country United States of America we're under siege we're under siege by those who hate they hate government they hate rules, law they want anarchy to reign people are being killed children eight years old are being killed and that's wrong that's not right one of the things that I have learned about the Jewish faith over all my studies is that life is sacred. When God breathed that breath of life into us, it's a little bit of Him, and it's sacred. 